you essentially started doing content in a different medium before anyone else did it. Yes. Yes. But and you you did it in a way you distributed it differently. It was yes. in everyone's videotape, right. whereas yeah. people were just what taking workout classes normally. Hardly. It was 1981. There were no gyms at all. None. I used to. St I started in a racquetball court. I rented out <laughs> racquetball courts and I loaded them up, <laughs> all line up, and put on my little music and Good I box. taught aerobics. So is there, with the first time you teach aerobics class in your racquetball gym, is there already like a line out the door? Or was there like two Oh, people? yeah, because I do it two by, oh, no, I had a, a big group right away. It was just beginning aerobics, the word aerobics in 1981. Is it this was like, great. is this like Richard Simmons, Lisa oh, yeah. Renna day or is this? It was Richard, Richard Simmons. Richard Simmons. I don't remember I Lisa Richard at Simmons. all. Yes. No, yeah. you didn't. Uh -huh. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. is he uh, like he's he my is? friend. Yes, of course. <laughs> I've been in this for 40 years. Can I do a workout class with Denise, Richard Simmons, and Jane Fonda? Oh, oh I wish he would. Richard I won't wish he come would. He out. wouldn't? It, no, he's <sighs> kind of a recluse now. He's Aww. done. Well, I mean, yeah. he got, I mean, he had so much publicity. Yes. I mean, especially, and then they did that show, you know, didn't they do a podcast and everything? I don't know. About I, where is Richard Simmons? Yeah, exactly. Where is we miss just, you. Yeah. We yeah. miss you. Everyone would like embrace you. I know, he was the best. Out. Oh, yeah. You can come on He's our podcast if you want. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so while I have you guys here, you both look amazing. You have really good energy. Your eyes are sparkly. You guys, I mean, you look like sisters. You guys are so oh, cute. Well, thank, thank you. I had to go take a cold shower before I came back in the studio. You guys came with a lot of energy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I was like, I was like I gotta get going. Woo! Are you yeah. sure it was a cold shower? What were you doing? <laughs> I had to go, I had to go cold Myself. Taylor had to go collect himself too. He's been in the back room closet. We don't know what he's doing. Um, I want you guys to edit my breakfast on air because I I feel like it's a lot of fruit and I'm eating a lot of fruit because everything tastes like metal. But I want you to tell me what you would do differently. But first, if you could describe it to the audience, maybe that would be good. Okay, so she has blackberries, blueberries, cacao nibs, and a date. And it's honestly Only one. A, a good portion <laughs> size, I will say that. And, you know, you are pregnant, so it's great nutrients. But at the same time, I would add a little bit of Greek yogurt. Yes, and, plain. Yeah. And you need some protein in there. That's a lot of, you know, sugars. It's still beautiful and fruits are very important, but I'd do half of that. And then inside that little date, I'd put a little almond butter yeah, in there so you get a little butter. extra, maybe a little flaxseed on top. So then you get omega-3s, you get some more protein to hold you off a little while. And then, of course, the berries are perfect. What are you guys' tricks for getting more protein in? Because I can't, like, eat a chicken. I just can't do it. Everyone's <laughs> like, have a chicken and broccoli. Like I, That sounds, like, dry and boring, and I just can't do it. I agree. I think almond butter is a great natural one. I also love protein powder, like plant-based protein powder. I love a lot of beans. I eat a lot of beans. I ate a breakfast burrito this morning with lentils in it to get a little extra Don't protein worry about well. it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> that sounds good. Yeah, and, and I mean, I like a lot of natural protein, um, like, you know, lean protein like chicken, ground turkey, salmon, and stuff like that. But we're at a hotel. What What do I do? You guys order your. We're at a eggs. hotel for two weeks. Do you Hard eat eggs? eggs? Eggs are turning me off right now. Okay. Normally, all the time. Okay. By the way, this is normally all the time eggs. Great. This is not my breakfast when I'm not pregnant. <laughs> yeah. But I, I just am trying to find creative ways to also get protein in when traveling. Okay, I love almonds. Okay. You take almonds on I can the road. Eat almonds, yep. Those are so good for you. Okay. And also walnuts. I roast my walnuts. You put it in a nice frying pan, no oil. Just put the so uh, walnuts in the pan, spread it apart, get it a little warmed up, and then take it out and let it cool a little bit. Then put a little bit of raw, good sh um, sea salt. salt, sea salt. And it's the it best. It tastes like popcorn. It's the it best is. snack ever. It and it's great on top of salads or anything like that. Too. Yes. And you'll have it for the whole week. Okay. It's so good. Put in Walnuts, little... roast them, put sea salt on them. Oh, yes. and they're only, so good. Only roast them for like two, three minutes. Sounds good. That yeah. sounds good. And amazing. not too high on heat, it burns because it has its own natural oils that help your skin, <laughs> your hair. <laughs> the way my mom talks is like her hand. She's a very <laughs> I love it. I love it. it. I love it. Okay. So I want to go back to tell both of your stories separately. And I think it's only appropriate to start with your mom because you weren't there yet. <laughs> when did you get into fitness? 
Well, I got my degree. I went to the University of Arizona, like you, you Michael. Oh. Yeah, she Googled you. Wait, she she knows. Knows. Go go well Denise Whoa. Austin <laughs> was at the University of Arizona. Uh, Can you imagine if Denise Austin <laughs> met Michael <laughs> Bostick at the jungle Listen, party? Denise, who yes. knows? In different times, we the same time. Wait, she also gave the commencement speech at the Oh, UVA, I did, and I brought and you a present. I wonder if it was like... One of the years. You, okay. You were, I, I had to wear the gown. Oh, wait, no, wait, and time. then I whipped the gown off and wow. turned my <laughs> commencement address this. in a hot pink Listen, leotard. D- Denise, like I said, I mean, different, <laughs> different eras, different times. I would have crossed paths. Do not <laughs> flirt with Denise in front of me. I have, to, I have to. Okay. I have to. By the way, you guys, if you're just listening, she brought a newspaper clipping from Michael to see her in her leotard. Because we pretty were cool, to the though. same school. I gave a spe- They asked me to be the commencement address speaker. And so the night before, we had had a big dinner and I asked the president of the university I have a little secret that I want to do tomorrow for the students am I okay are you okay and is this appropriate that I wear the gown of course line up with everybody and then when I start my speech I'll talk a little about how important it is to take good care of your body and then I had it all pinned perfectly and I whipped it off I said and the most important is taking care of your body let's all stand up and do a little aerobics <laughs> hold on so you were in college taking care of your body you already knew yes. it, 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 it i was a gymnast i was on a full athletic scholarship in gymnastics so my whole life was training discipline you know practicing doing gymnastics i was offered an athletic scholarship at university of arizona and that's where i went and then i got my degree in exercise physiology and i graduated in 80 so by 81 aerobics was just beginning and guess who i met Jack LaLanne. Jack LaLanne used to have an exercise TV show. He's like the the old man who, you know, did all kinds of feats, swam across the uh, Catal- to Catalina Island with boats. You know, he was just the most amazing person. So I loved him and I got a chance to be on his TV show and they loved me so much. Him and his wife, Elaine LaLanne. <laughs> <laughs> And I was a, a co-host and I was like, this is the best thing in the whole world to be on TV, doing my favorite thing. I choreographed all the routines because I was a gymnast and, you know, I had to choreograph floor exercise. So it became so natural to do aerobics. Have you always had this kind of energy? I yes. know. I'm like, yes, oh my God, I should have had another cup of coffee. Yes. <laughs> the baby will be fine. <laughs> Literally, she wakes I, up like this at 5.30 a.m. It's every pretty day. incredible. Yes. Yeah. And I'm 65 now. I just had a birthday and I feel great. I feel like I'm 40. I still, just last week, I was with all my girlfriends. I danced on tables nice. <laughs> in she Park is. City. She's not lying. It's must be just, so much fun to have a mom like that. She is, like you said, she's honestly my sister. That's why we're so close too, because, you know, she acts like she's 21. I will literally be wearing leggings. Like, you know, when her day and age, she was wearing this, like a leotard, short shorts and everything. Oh, up the rear. And, and she hates me <laughs> wearing you. leggings. She's like, less clothes. <laughs> I'm like, short. Sure, show your legs. body. You're young. I just You're told strong. you after I give birth to this baby that my my shorts are going to show my labia. <laughs> <laughs> I am so ready to just let every single facet of my curve hang you out. You have I a am really sexy wife. Yeah. Lose, <laughs> I am losing Why do you think she's weight. got another one on the way? I am <laughs> tightening things up. Up. I, well, I'm i getting there, which we're going to talk about. And I'm going to be wearing this outfit that you wore. On I have it. Katie's worn it. Yeah, I have saved, saved all my old 1980s outfits. And Katie and I have done some retro aerobic workouts together. Is that Wait, cool? you should dress up for her as Halloween with the cap on. Oh, Lauren, I've done it six times. Oh. And everyone's like, and I did it literally two years ago. And they're like, give it up, Katie. <laughs> like, you have to stop dressing like your mom. I'm like, but it's so easy because I don't like to dress up and like go after a huge outfit costume. I don't have that like, you know, time and effort in me. And so I just take one of her old outfits and put it on. They're like, dude, it's too much. You do it dress too much. Dress up in the, as the guy in the back who's beating his meat. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the guy? Dean's face. Did you guys actually know she was in Step Brothers, the opening scene? when Will Ferrell was beating his meat to my mom? Yeah. Yeah, fun fact. I was. He what? asked me if I, he could use a portion <laughs> of my TV show because I had a television show. So after Jack LaLanne, I got my own TV show and I started on ESPN back in the day, right when it was starting. And so I had my own exercise TV show. So I was on ESPN for 10 years and then I got a lot weirdo. 
letters, you know, being on ESPN and all. And I moved on to the Lifetime TV for women. And I was on there for 14 years. So I was on TV every weekday morning for 24 years, which is quite, wow. you know, yeah, yeah. amazing back in the day. No, that's so, I mean, I start to think this is our sixth year. We just had our sixth year doing this. I'm like, yeah, it's been a long time, but 24 years of Jesus. Yes. And wow. so when Katie and Kelly, our two daughters were born, I was on the road. I had to film my TV show right when she was six weeks old. <laughs> I had to get back to, you know, to Hawaii and nurse her and get ready for my leotards. <laughs> I, don't know if the, I don't know if the networks get away with that now. Now they got to give a little bit more time, right? Oh, yeah. Their... Well, that was my time. I owned my own show. So it Hold was a little on. different. Can we go back? So Will Ferrell was beating his meat to you in your workout video. <laughs> yes. In one of my exercise TV shows. <laughs> Step Brothers. And I gave approval. And they even tell you what they're doing. When you receive it to make a, you know, statement that you say yes to, you know, this is fine with me. I didn't care. What the kind of oh my God, yeah. I would love it. If Will Ferrell was like, I'm going to beat my meat to you, I would be like, that's like an accolade to hang next to an Academy Don't Award. Don't bother me, Mom. Mom, he said on the show. Okay, so, so you, you create this fitness brand. You have two kids while you're doing it. I feel like I have experienced how much pressure it is to be on social media now. And with my first daughter, I gained 55 pounds and it, it took two years to lose. Is that not a lot of pressure to to be this fitness icon and then gain all this weight and then you have to lose it right away? You know, I really, truly wasn't worried about it. And we didn't have social media at the time. So I didn't feel actually my um, ratings went sky high right after I had Katie because they wanted to see what the hell my tummy looked like. <laughs> it's relatable. Probably. Yes, it's relatable. And so I never uh, had a lot of pressure on myself. I was just... Honestly, like a normal mom, just this was my job. I loved it. It's my passion. But I wasn't hard on myself at all. I just knew it's going to come off. I'm going to be fine. My tummy's going to be flat again, hopefully. <laughs> and, it is. Yeah. Yes, I can confirm and it is. <laughs> I had faith. I had hope. And I didn't worry about it. We lived in Washington, D.C., where they grew up, where it wasn't. We no one cared as much as they do now in Los Angeles. I mean, truly. So, it, So when you would go out before you had kids were you getting recognized left and right no I became more famous after the kids after because the kids. it took a while to build my business and um, by that time I had VHS exercise videos then DVDs and I sold 25 million between DVDs and VHS Jesus. yeah that 25 is, million let's, let's, and it'll hold the record because you can't sell a damn one anymore, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll always hold it. Nobody's going to break it. No That's one's going to cool. be able to break Wait, it. Uh, in, like, what is that now with YouTube views? If you were to put that now. Well, I don't think you could compare them because it's so different because if people didn't, you didn't have access. I mean, YouTube, you have, there's, you can just watch endless amounts of content. Like this was limited back then, right? If you didn't have a, you know, if you if you were doing the same type of thing, creating content, but you didn't have a DVD and you did, like you weren't going to see the right. other person. I yeah. remember my mom. I feel like I want to say it was a step up exercise yes, that she was I doing am. with you. And yeah. you know, your mom has all her DVDs and still does them I'm sure. all the time. No, I remember my mom. mom looks great. What's the thing? The what's the little platform that I guess it's called a step, step aerobics. Yeah. I had a Denise Austin step aerobics. <laughs> yes, yes, you had a yes, branded one. A branded one. I had my whole line of was it, exercise was it accessories. Blue or green or something. I no. had different colors. One was pink, uh, turquoise, and black. Might have been turquoise. Yes, it was Maybe turquoise. My mom does that. Yes, yes, your mom does well, do I'm it. Gonna, I'm going to call her. After and they this were lightweight, so you could pick them up and throw them back. In, you your have mom is going to freak the fuck out when she sees a <laughs> selfie with you and Denise Austin. You have to flex your muscle. Oh, we'll right. call her afterwards. Yeah, let's go. So, you know what? She just, I think she's in Europe right now. She just, oh, she failed. Okay. She left well, wake her up. She said to get the hell out of there. Yeah, wake her up. <laughs> okay. So what is so interesting to me, and, and then I want to get into the baby stuff about you though, is you were creating content exactly how Katie and I are creating content back in the day. And then you were content marketing to create a product. Yes. Meaning like you were showing how to work out and then you introduced the step and you were yes. showing how to work out and you had your, your video. What was that like compared to now? Oh, it's so different now because uh, with social media, you have to be on it day after day after day. It's like hourly in a way because of the stories now. But when I did it, I'd film five shows a day for a week in the Caribbean and I'd get home and I'd be a mom. I would just 
you know, I was picking them up from school. And I, so one week a month, I was out of town. So honestly, the rest of the time I was PR, I did a lot of talk shows. I did the Today Show for four years as their fitness expert. I did, oh my gosh, every show you could think of. You know, PR was important back then. And that was my avenue. Like you are having the podcast. This is your, you know, chance to, um, feel, show the world what you do. And I just loved having a TV show because I was able to really, you know, just say anything I wanted. It's just me alone. I just would think of things. Come on, you know, squeeze your butt. Come on right now. If you don't squeeze it, no one else will. And people would like write me and say, that's the best line, you know. Or, that is a good line. You know, sit up tall, pull in that tummy. Oh, there you did yeah. a sit up. Well, I think it's really cool, too, because as you were saying, creating content like we are today, she was really an original influencer because you would go out and call these brands and be like, hi, what was it, Florida Orange Juice or something? Yes, you're like, yeah. will you please sponsor my show? And you would go to CEOs. You would walk into Walmart CEOs and everywhere and call them up and call them 30 times and be like, sponsor my show. <laughs> and so I think that was really cool because she did have those brand integrations just like we do today, but in a different sort of distribution way. Yes. It was ahead of the times. Yeah, yeah. I, I called up cold calls to every single sponsor. I had three sponsors a year, but most of them stayed on for 10 15 years, you know, and so I did all the calls, all the calls to the hotels where I would do, you know, spread out my little uh, film crew and film five shows a day. So um, I became, you know, I had to call to get on the Today Show. It was 1984. They've never had fitness on the Today Show ever. Jane Pauley and Bryant Gumbel. And I called Steve Friedman 35 times executive producer till finally one time I said, you know what? I'm calling him nine to five being a really nice, you know, good person. I'm going to call it an odd time. I called at 630 at night. Steve Friedman. I was like, oh, hi, Steve. This is Denise Austin. And, and you know, you boom, can't boom, turn boom, away boom. a call from Denise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, he flew me up to Rockefeller Center and I got down the floor and showed what I'm going to do on your TV show. You are going to give me four minutes and I'm going to show how to get a rock hard tummy. How to do, you know, boom, boom. And he gave me a piece of paper, March 23rd, 24th. And those were my first dates on the show. And then I wow. had a contract for four straight years, once a month. Dude, you were hustling. You were you made the word hustling before anyone was hustling. <laughs> I loved it. It was so fun. I did it myself, but my husband, mind you, he's yeah, what's his brilliant. personality? He, he, yeah, what? He's a sports <laughs> attorney. He's so humble and so smart and brilliant. S- yes. Such integrity. And he's a lawyer. So he did all my mom's contracts and he was like their biggest supporter too. So I what? have a hot tip. Marry a lawyer if you're really great at business. <laughs> Find a lawyer. Just like weed through Tinder or some shit. <laughs> Look for the lawyer because it's like efficient, right? You just have the lawyer in bed with you. Denise, yes. I, I have to know this. What was your childhood like? Or like what were your parents like? How, where, did, where does this come from? Well, I'm one of five. Okay. I'm the middle child. Okay. <laughs> and um, I was always busy. I, you know, being a gymnast at 11 years old, going to practice. My dad played professional baseball, Joe okay. Katnitz. She played on, um, well, St. Louis Browns in 1942, 43, uh, no, 46 and 47. And then my mom, she loved, she was a jump rope person. Um, because they're both from, active parents. The, yes, very active. And we had five kids and we had to do everything ourselves. I mean, my Parents didn't even drive me to college, you know, and say goodbye. Bye, mom. I drove away with a friend. <laughs> so you almost had to like stand out in a way to get your parents' attention because you have five kids. Yes. And I didn't need their attention. I felt like I, uh, my father was a salesman, M&M Mars Candy Company for 44 years. Wow. wow. So I used to go when I was five years old with them to stores and do f- front facing for all the M&M. I'm peanut, sure you sold you know, a M- of M&M. M&M Mars Candy yeah. Bar. So uh, I, I love to go with him to do all that. I thought that was so cool. Make sure the product is seen at high level. So I'd switch it all. I was five. <laughs> we have video of me doing that. And I think it became normal when I had my own VHSs. <laughs> okay, let's go to that Walmart. Fix it all up. My sisters would do it for me. Isn't so, it amazing how you look back on your childhood in those moments? Like you yeah. you refine to create the career that you have. Like, yeah. like the, 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 the styling of the M&Ms and then your style your VHS tapes. Right. It's true. Really cool. Okay. So, so we're, we're getting into the story, but first I need to know, cause you told me off air, you also said it on air that you had to lose the weight in six weeks after you had Katie. 
But I didn't lose it. I had still a tummy. I didn't. I just tried my best because I didn't want to overdo it because I also had a a three-year-old. You know, Katie has an older sister, Kelly. So I had her running around. I had to nurse Katie and get ready and choreograph my routines and write out my music. So I had to get my leotards ready. (laughs) So how are you losing weight? As someone who's sitting at the table really would like to know inquiring minds, how are you losing weight? I mean, you said you didn't lose it all, but you you're you're getting fit in those six weeks. Like, what are you doing? Because I need walking some only. I only started with walking. Walking because you can't work because you can't work out. So when I went to film that show, that was the first time I did my sit ups. First time, but I have great memory, muscle memory, and yeah. it came right back. And I just did it. I don't know. So walking, like, are you walking like two hours a day to get in shape for that, or is no? It I, I was light working, walking, like like walking. Just you know, I I really believe in isometrics. I, right after I had the babies, I tried to pull my tummy in, belly button in, almost like tighten up your abs, feel like you're tightening up. So I was very conscientious of good posture during pregnancy, pull the abs in. I was, uh, I'm an ab nut. So I believe it's a center of the body and protects your spine, protects your baby. So I was very, um, conditioned and in shape while I was pregnant because I had to film exercise videos. And you want to hear a fun little fact? <laughs> uh, you know, my husband represents um, Stephen Curry, the greatest basketball player <laughs> ever in our eyes and right, family so member. <laughs> but um, so my husband represented his dad for 17 years. So when I was pregnant, uh, we did it uh, with my oldest daughter, Kelly, and uh, Stefan's mom was pregnant with uh, Seth, the second bait boy. Uh, we did an exercise video together. She was, you know, one of my backup girls. And then we had to do an after baby shape up a month later, hold our little babies to prove it was a month later. And then we did a workout after baby shape up workout for 20 minutes. Maybe I should just go back to the basics and just put your VHS. Yes, on come on, and, baby. And do the, do the, I do digitized the them. So I got them on digital now. Honestly, I'm Honestly. not joking. I, I think that simple works and I am going to, I'm not joking. I'm going to go pull up your VHS and try to do it during pregnancy. That's awesome. Just shake it, shake the baby in my arms. <laughs> like you did. Okay. So I want to know about you guys' relationship as you're growing up. What is it like to grow up with a mom who has so much charisma? She's out there. Like, is it annoying that when you go to lunch, people are coming up to her? Like, what is it like? Well, first off, I grew up in D.C., so it wasn't like growing up in Los Angeles where everyone would, you know, kind of maybe recognize her. It was a very, very normal life. But at the same time, like you asked her, did you get recognized a lot? We would be in, you know, grocery stores and airports and people would rush up to her and be like, oh, my gosh, are you Denise Austin? You saved my life and you helped me get out of my toxic marriage. You helped me, you know, get out of things that I thought I would never be able to do. You helped me grow my confidence. And I think seeing my mom be so happy when she is helping other people really made me, I guess, get in the fitness industry as well. But I think something that my parents really did well was never put too much pressure on me. Like it was never working out to be aesthetically like six pack or tone booty or lose weight ever, ever, ever. It was more like, let's get involved in athletics. I was an athlete my entire life. So was my sister. And so I think it was more like, let's be strong girls. And, and something that she also, you did really, really well is you never focused on my looks ever, 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 ever. Uh, I mean, obviously you'd be like, you look so beautiful, but at the same time it was like, you're so smart. You're so powerful. You are, can achieve anything you want to. And I think that was really, really a, a great way to grow up as well, to not have your mom be focused on your looks and um, be involved in athletics, but never put too much pressure on me and just making sure I'm healthy um, in a way that I'm playing sports because I'm strong, working out for my sport and competing with in that way. She got athletic scholarship in uh, lacrosse at the University of Southern California. Yeah, right so that's here. how I got to LA, LA yeah. is um, I played lacrosse. I was on a scholarship uh, for Hard USC. worker. Yeah. So, you know, being an athlete my entire life she, and, and having two – parents who grew an empire in their own right but support each other like seeing that has really taught me just like hard work determination and and you know my mom is a a very great example of you can achieve anything and she really believes it when you put your mind to it you can achieve it well what i like about both of you guys is that you've created your own future you didn't wait for someone to come around and tell you 
here, you can do this or hire you to do this. Or it sounds like you both have really just paved the way and created what you wanted to create out of nothing. She actually has created so much more than I ever did at this what? age. Oh, at no, this age. no, like... at your age, because you have, you know, so much. She created her own app. She works hard for that. She does, you know, Snapchat show. She does. She has across the board so many things. I, mine was just funneled into TV. Oh, I just want to be on TV. You know, it was focused. Where hers, she has so many interests. She can cook. She could. So it's really cool because she could take it in eight directions. But I think that's also like our you, day and age. Lauren. You yeah. know, I think that's our day and age. Like when you grew up, that's you didn't have that option or, or right. social media. And I think I get a lot of hate online that's like, um, you know, you're just following your mom and you're doing, and they compare us a lot. And, and we're obviously very, very different. That's my number one hate comment. It's wild. Um, and, you know, of course, Katie's going to be successful in the fitness industry because her mom is such an icon. But I actually, I actually just don't think it works like that. I mean, yes, I'm not going to sit here and lie that my last name, Austin, does not help. I was on a call yesterday and was like, oh my God, are you Denise Austin's daughter? Of course it helps in some ways. But at the same time, a lot of people who are in, no offense to you, are in their 20s and are a little bit younger, Gen Z, actually don't know who Denise Austin is. No offense. I love no, you. No, no. But their mom does. But people who I am targeting actually don't. My demographic doesn't. And plus, what I can do in social media is so vastly different than what my mom did with DVDs and VHSs. I can't have my fitness TV show run for 30 years. And so <laughs> it's really, really, really different. And I, I would love people to understand that more instead of constantly compare us. You know, what's funny though. I mean, I, the, I, I think about this all the time. Like whenever there's somebody who's had a parent that's had success, right. And whether that's financially from a, like, you know, celebrity platform, notoriety, whatever it is, you're always inevitably going to get stuck in that comparison. But I think it's, you are rare compared to the majority of people you hear about who completely squander those opportunities. Like you can, you can go to any assortment of kids that grew up privileged and the high majority of those kids either end up fizzling out, fucking up, going over the, like not doing something. Right. So you should be proud of yourself that you are doing something and that you're taking what your mom's done and furthering it. Right. Like that's the yeah. goal, right? Like totally. I, I actually it, think people need to get better with their, with their um, attacks. I think they need to get a little more creative. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I'm a little bored with this. I think you need to whiteboard. Like, <laughs> you're you're going to say yeah. that you, that's, that's the hate comment that you get. It's so lazy. Here's, I had a, I, I don't think I've ever talked about this. So I grew up with some privilege. Obviously my dad was successful and we used to have conversations all the time. We'd drive him and him and I in the car and he'd be like, listen, He's like, I am going to take everything that I learned and all the hard work that I've put in, and I'm going to try to share these experiences with you and pass them on to you. Oh. And my, my hope is, is that you will further, you know, the success that, I, that he's been able to have, which is what I've obviously been trying to do. But he would tell me that he's like, you would have to be a complete moron to do worse because I'm giving you and telling you, not giving you, but telling you everything that I did that worked and telling you everything I didn't. So if you don't further then basically you're a fucking moron because <laughs> I'm telling you what works and what doesn't, right? Right. And I always thought about that. I'm like, of course, like if I have, now I have children and I'm going to try to give them everything that's worked for me and, and caution against everything that hasn't. And if they don't get a little further, then it's like kind of, to my dad's point, it's like you're kind of, it's your it's fault. It's on them. It's on them, right? Yeah. So um, I always look at those arguments. And I'm like, listen, you can go anywhere in the world and compare yourself and find people, you, it, find people that are doing worse or better. And so that game yeah. becomes a losing game. The idea is that you try to further and get better than where your predecessors and your ancestors were. Like, that's and the whole why point not? Of the yeah. Why not help them to, you know, just sure. teach them? She so, actually came out naturally. Uh, learn, that too. I had her naturally. <laughs> but uh, natu it came to her more natural, her fitness with me, because she really had, uh, when she was little, I used to take them on the road with me. And my older daughter would just find lizards and play. She would stare and watch and stand behind the camera and kind of do it when she was like two or three. She would hang there with the film crew. So honestly, it was kind of in her blood already. And then, you know, she was a lacrosse player, so she couldn't think of anything but lacrosse and studying. And when she graduated from college, then she came to me and said, you know what? I, she did a TV show on USC show and she loved, you know, just teaching and helping people. And that's how her passion was created. It wasn't like, this is what you're going to do. Sure. <laughs> you know, I right. never even dreamed of it. The tragedy you? in life. I mean, the, there's the, the people who are looking at you like, wow, look what you're doing. Look how great you're doing. You're going, going, you, you had this great mom that taught you all these things and dad. 
the tragedy would be if people looked at you to complete fuck up and they're like, man, like she had all this opportunity. <laughs> yeah, and really just, she has yeah, no entitlement win. type of personality. She's a, her hardest work you, you've ever met since she was little. She, everything, she's graduated from USC, cum laude. I mean, she That's worked fun. really hard. We didn't, you know, she doesn't want a penny from us. She yeah. did everything herself. Huge she won't point. take a, a penny, not a penny. I right. need to get my dad on the podcast to talk about how great I am. <laughs> <laughs> she is my number one fan. My so number one cute. fan. No, I just, no, but you made uh, a point. It means something to me, you yeah, know, that I raised someone with character, with integrity, who wants to do it herself. I mean, like me, I want to do it well, myself. And emotional. it's pretty cool that you guys are working together and like right I now, how it. fun is this? Yeah. Like it's Tuesday and you can go get to work with your mom. Oh, it's the best ever. It's really, it's really awesome. And one last thing, I love the quote. I think being self-aware of our privilege is obviously key, but at the same time is like, you can, my mom can open a door for me, but she can't walk me through it. Sure, that's my point. And so, yeah, exactly. So I still have to work really hard and, and people always ask me, oh, did you get in the fitness industry because your mom? I actually have no idea because yeah, sure, it was instilled in me maybe subconsciously since I was little, but I was an athlete my entire life. And so when I quit lacrosse, I didn't know what to do. And I saw all my friends around me don't know, you know, what to do with their bodies. And they're afraid of, you know, the gym because they're intimidated by it. And at the same time, my broad, I have a broadcast degree at USC and I did hosting. So I really just combined my love of hosting and my love of athletics into being a fitness personality. Yes, it's exactly what my mom did. But at the same time, I find it my own passion as well in my own right. Yeah, good th- for you. I think. Yeah. Um, Who's you know, ever saying that to you? <laughs> go work on something else. The, <laughs> tell them to call you, Lauren. Get busy. <laughs> the people, I, I, I always try to point this out. So, like, say somebody was, say somebody, like, I can acknowledge that I've had some privilege in my life, but say somebody is sitting around in the ruminating saying, Michael only has X level of success because of X, Y, and Z. My point, that conversation does nothing to me, right? I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. And I, I don't even hear the conversations or I block them out. What it does, it's the person that's having that conversation or telling themselves that narrative about why they're not somewhere where they want to be and why somebody else is. All that conversation is doing is holding them back. So what I try to caution people is like, stop making excuses about why you're not where you want to be based on where someone else is, because that's not stopping the other person. It's just stopping you. So it's counterproductive, right? The idea is like, I want to look at anybody in any walk of life and say, wow, that's a successful person. I can do that and I can do more. Like, what's that conversation look like? I want her to be successful in her happiness too, in oh. her relationships. That's more, as you age, I, I love that even more. more Making, important. It's yeah. way more important. And yeah. we have a very balanced life. And I think that's also what happened to her. She's very well balanced because living in Washington, D.C., you know, it was the White House was more important, let me tell you, <laughs> <laughs> or whatever. But I just, uh, it was a, a normal upbringing when you think about it. Um, I mean, she was well educated. Uh, DC has the best schools, but sure. the same time, she's. Uh, I love her energy and her joy. She has such joy in what she does that it Do you makes want to come me to happy. every interview that no. I do? Oh <laughs> this is wow. very really? special why for me. Know, why did you guys <laughs> choose DC? Just out of curiosity. My husband was a sports lawyer, and his sis, uh, one of the biggest companies in sports marketing in 1983, okay. uh, when we got married, is in Washington. So his sister was number one in the world in tennis. Wow. Tracy Austin. She was uh, she won U.S. Open, youngest ever in the history of wow. te- uh, you guys are tennis. Sporty. Yes, my husband played professional. He was also on a tennis athletic scholarship at UCLA. So all four of our little families been on athletic scholarships. So uh, Katie, what do you do now as your career? If you were to describe it to our audience, wrapped in a bow. Okay, so long story short, I first w- worked for Fox Sports West and I did like hosting at the Super Bowl. I did NBA awards at overtime and I worked for the NBA. I think about two, three years ago when 2020 really hit, I started to focus more on at home workouts and um, I created an app. It's called the Katie Austin app and I have my own show, Austin app. I have my own Snapchat original show called Healthy Hacks. I am a Sports Illustrated swimsuit rookie. I just Woo! won um, the competition for Sports Illustrated. I heard congratulations. Um, I was, that was my next question. Go on. Thank I you. I can't and to ask um, you yeah, I think my entire thing, uh, like, accolades aside or anything of like what I actually have, it's more so like making girls feel their best self through workouts and healthy recipes. Sports Illustrated reaches out to you. Are you no, freaking? You no. reach out to them? I auditioned since 2017. I did Swim Search. So basically it's an online audition. It's a casting. So when I did it, 22,000 girls, I think, 22,000 girls tried out. 
was a year and a half long process. And I got the call that I won in October, September of this year. And I shot in Europe, which was really awesome. I got to go to Montenegro and the issue releases in May. And so it's really exciting. And I, it's still so crazy to me. Okay, I'm buying an issue. I need Thank to put that you. on my Instagram story. Oh. That must be like a full circle moment for you. Oh, it's beautiful. I never did it. <laughs> I never had the opportunity or thought of it. I mean, it's, but it's, it's amazing. Awesome. It's fantastic. That's a big accomplishment, it's too. Big. Well, I also like it better than they just called me because I went through the audition process yeah. and I went through the ringer to like get to where I am. And, you know, they really had to really know who I am to pick me. And so it feels like very rewarding to go through swim search and, and be and like win it as a rookie in that way. I would be stupid not to ask you guys your little hacks for food. Tell us about what you eat, both of you, because different ages. I want to yes. know, you know, what does breakfast look like? Are you intermittent fasting? Are you waking up with chlorophyll water? Like, give us all your little details throughout your day. We are not into anything like crazy, you know, like chlorophyll water type things were very, very simple. Like you said, okay. simple works, not into intermittent fasting whatsoever. I eat a very, very balanced breakfast. I usually have avocado, sourdough toast. I have a piece of sourdough toast every single day. I don't think fresh local sourdough toast is bad for you. What's your favorite brand? My favorite brand of sourdough toast? It's called Superba. It's local, but <laughs> it's a bakery. <laughs> it's a bakery um, or bread block if you're gluten free. Um, and so I have eggs. And then for lunch, I have like a simple like chicken salad on with some lettuce. Uh, again, avocado, healthy fat. Um, I drink a smoothie five days a week, a protein smoothie. I love. I have a huge dinner, but I will say this. My biggest thing is never eating after 8 p.m. And so I think once I, you know, I'm not a huge believer in intermittent fasting. I do think it can work in some capacity. But for me, it's just not eating after 8 p.m. And I constantly move my body as well. So the onion rings that I ate in bed last night they're at 1030 was not the move. And so the night fine. before the sourdough <laughs> that I ate with. <laughs> duh. No, but, Lord, I no, think, but I do that too. I think that's right balanced. Now. No, I, no, I think no things, you know what? I'm just fucking going with it yes, right now. Yeah. Yeah. When this is when the baby's out where it's time to tighten the lips. No, but it's, <laughs> I, I never follow anything strict or any type of diet. I really just listen to my body and I fuel my body. I, I, literally look at food as an athlete my entire life as fuel. I never look at it as restricting in any way. Um, you know, I was taught to chug two muscle milks after I lifted. Oh, wow. Muscle milk. That's vintage. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so that's how, you know, as an athlete, you have to eat so much food. And so that's how I still, uh, I have to switch it a little bit, obviously, but I still eat like that. And Denise? Okay. I eat everything. I love food, <laughs> okay. but everything in moderation. I eat, well, 80% of the time and then have my treats 20%. I love red wine. Beer. I love beer. <laughs> I like a hamburger and french fries every once in a while, but I eat a lot of greens. I believe I put a whole tray, a cookie tray filled with veggies. I sprinkle it with a little bit of uh, salt and olive oil I put in the oven and I could eat that. I always have some form of uh, good protein, obviously. I eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And my favorite thing is a good breakfast. I don't do intermittent fr fasting. I tried it for two days. <laughs> I did not like it, but I love to eat, drink my coffee in the morning, do my workout, and then have a nice breakfast. But do you, you do, always say something? Do you too. do a form of inner, like if you guys both, st do you stop eating at eight as well? Or Well, I, I believe in eating breakfast like a king, yes. eat lunch like a queen, and dinner like a pauper. Okay. And it works for me. It that truly good? does. <laughs> um, so, but if you stop, but if you, do you stop eating at eight as well? Or? Uh, sometimes I do. Okay. Uh, well, she goes to bed at 830. So probably <laughs> most likely, up. yes. <laughs> hey, listen, I go to bed at eight. I tried. <laughs> Are you, you said you're a fan of red wine. Are you a fan of cocktails? Oh, yes. Oh, my God. Katie makes the best cocktails. I unfortunately a drink a lot. Yeah. Uh, I, I love tequila. I can't oh, wait. Yes. I'm yeah. counting down the seconds. I to love tequila. The one with I think a huge thing, too, really simple um, and might be obvious for some people. Like you said, you love hamburgers and, and French fries. I, I think we eat a lot of amazing, you know, food, but at the same time, we portion it. I think that's the biggest thing is like portions. And so if we're going out to dinner together, we'll order the hamburger and fries, but also we'll share it. it. We'll share it 
with a salad on the side or with the vegetables on the side. So it it is all about the portions. Yes. So like this Mack truck of fruit to my left is like, <laughs> maybe needs to, we need to work on the portions. Over. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not really eating for two, am I? <laughs> uh, what about little wellness rituals that you do every single day? Like whether it's a morning routine or a nighttime routine or something wellnessy that you both do. And this could be something that you've done since you had your VHS tape? Well, one of the biggest things I do, you guys, is I think about good posture all the time. She you does. are your own architect oh, yeah. by the way you sit up, by the way you stand. So if you have bad posture, your tummy has nowhere else to go but pooch out. But if you have a nice, good posture, sitting up nice and tall, suck in that tummy, be aware of the abdominals all the time. It really works. Feel as though you're wearing like a tight corset, Michael. No, not really. oh, I mean, I am. No, okay. <laughs> but the key is, is posture plays so much in your health. You're not crushing your organs. You're not letting things slouch and look, un, you know, excited. Posture is the key to feeling good. The oxygen flows better. You get more oxygen intake through your lungs. Oxygen equals energy. So remember that anytime you feel, you know, three o'clock comes around, deep breaths, move those muscles. Muscles give you energy. Muscles work miracles on your metabolism. metabolism. I know yes. all her lines. I also think of something you, <laughs> you say a lot is if you squeeze your abs for five seconds and then you let go, that's equal to one sit up. Yeah. Tighten it like, like isometrics, like someone's going to suck in the tummy. Tighten those abs. Five seconds. Tight, tight, tight. And then release and then do it throughout the day. And throughout the day, I do stretches in my, you know, if I'm sitting for a long period of time on my computer, I get up. The, you burn more calories when you stand up than you do sitting down. So think about that. So at any time throughout the day, you want to move those muscles. It's all how many 16 hours we're awake. How much did you move? So and yeah, I don't think enough, can, enough people are talking about the pot because you sit so long. now. Right. This is not, that's not how we're supposed to, to be. No, never, Jordan Peterson, his 12 rules for life. Michael was telling me the other day, one of them is stand like a lobster. The first one is stand uh, but, up straight yeah, like a lobster. Because yeah. lobsters what? Well, there's a good month. Uh, I'm, I'm going to fuck it up. I'm going to mess up his whole thing. But the, his point is he actually like studied lobsters. And he said Ooh. that lobsters that stand up straight with strong postures yes. actually dominate in the field of lobsters. No way. And it's over periods of time, the weaker lobsters that couldn't stand up straight just get dominated by them. And so more women go to the male lobsters that stand up straight, more opportunity, more yes, food. Confidence. More Taylor is so slumped over Pornhub right now. What Taylor, you got to sit up straight if you're going to watch <laughs> the Pornhub. But he, he applied and he, he went and studied humans and he actually said humans that stand upright with good posture and walk into a room, like you command more confidence, you command more opportunities, you get like more abundance oh, in I your life. Oh, I believe in that. You walk into a room with good confidence and a smile on your face and you feel good. Absolutely. I mean, you're a perfect example of that. Some Someone also told me, and I'm not like a super fitnessy, so I don't know if this is true, that what you said about contracting your abs actually helps prevent dialysis. Re re yes, what, yes. What's the, it? How do you the say the it again? Split in split your, when you're pregnant, while you're pregnant, right. and afterwards, you need to, uh, you know, don't do anything twisty after the baby because that could help split it. Okay. So everything's got to be pulled in. Do pelvic tilts. That's one of the best exercises. Back on on your back, you know, like a bridge, but just go a little bit and tighten the vag each uh, time to get oh, the kegel yes, in. Right. Yes. Always. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Tighten the tighten the vag. Yeah, lift up right now. Come on, lift up. <laughs> Michael, come on. Come on. <laughs> you tighten that with your butt. Yeah. <laughs> Look great from behind, baby. Use <laughs> those bottoms. <gasps> Michael's looking great from behind. He showed me oh, about yes. 600 times in the last two months after he's been working out with his new trainer. <laughs> um, I love it. But, that's, but the tightening of the abs d does help. Like before you have the baby, it does help prevent dialysis. I oh, absolutely. Uh, Rectal. Okay. Retie, I don't Let's know. Let's call it DR. Like, DR. DR. Whatever. Yeah. Just splitting of the abs. <laughs> yeah, splitting of the abs. Okay, so what do you guys do now working together in tandem? Tell us about what you're working on now. Ooh, together. Yeah. We do mother-daughter workouts yes, online workouts. on my website and on her uh, um website and social and you know and do she got me on instagram want to do more together i'm not yeah. um i think right now you know during 2020 when i lived with her we did so many workouts together but now i live on my own and so i really we want to do more stuff together and you now my focus is fitness together. over 50 
because uh-huh. we are really in need of health now at this age. And I have a whole new magazine that comes out uh, four times a year. It's quarterly. It's seasonal. This one is coming out. It's the spring issue. It comes out next week, and I'm really excited. It's 100 pages of Denise Austin. (laughs) (laughs) All my recipes, all my tips about staying healthy, uh, menopausal tips to flatten your belly, how to rest better. This magazine sells really well. Oh, I'm sure. Yes, this is my um, second year now, and it's it's in every grocery store, every drugstore. I've seen you every single time I go to the grocery store. I've seen you. Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. I feel like you're everywhere. Thank St- you, like sweetie. still, that's such that's so amazing that after all these years, the staying power that you've had, like that's incredible. Forty years to uh this year. I'm celebrating forty years in the business and I love it. And I have so much more energy now to do new things for women over fifty. And it's more fun to work now because I've got my daughter, like, I gotta keep going, baby. <laughs> How you do know you guys I love have it? so much energy? You guys have like the most energy that anyone that's ever come on the show. And I mean, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, what what are you doing? Which water are you drinking? It's Your so funny water. because people who meet me are like, wow, you're so energetic. And I do have good energy. But then they meet my mom and they're like, the level. what the hell? You have, like, I actually seem very calm compared to my mom. It's wild. But you know, I think it's I think it's inspiring because you, this is the first time, I think maybe this happens when you have children, right? Where you like start to think about, oh, shit, I need to kind of be here for a little while longer. And I, you know, people, yes. the, you go through life like, oh, by the time I'm 40, I can slow down 50, but maybe 60, I'll retire. But now I'm starting, I, I want to be here as long as possible with the most health and energy as possible, right? Absolutely. When you're young, you don't think about these things. You just think yeah. it's always going to be here. Right. But I, yeah. I notice it now. I'm like, okay, if I don't take it, you know, if I don't take care of myself, it's not going to be here. I, I think the audience would die if I didn't ask you both your workout routines. Ooh, workout routine. Okay, so I actually only work out for 30 minutes a day. Um, I get kind of a little bit bored. At, uh, so working out for 30 minutes, meaning I do a lot of like hit and uh, 10 pound weights and not to heavy weights. I did that in college and used to max out lift. And I just enjoy my life better when I do 10 pounds or five pounds. So light weights for 30 minutes, a little bit of hit. And then I always do a 20 minute walk. So I guess in total 15 minutes of the day, but I usually do a 30 minute workout in the morning and then 20 minutes in the afternoon of a walk. And that's every day, uh, six days a week. Okay. Okay. I walk every single day now, and this is how I meet up with my girlfriends, okay. walk and talk, and we catch up in life Passive or with my sisters because I, I want to, you know, catch up with their lives. So then I come back into my house. Um, we live by the beach, and I do a little yoga I, every day I do a little something different because I believe in changing it up. So I'll do Katie Austin's app. I love her sculpt. <laughs> Thanks for the plug. No, sculpt it. It's a new yeah. cardio workout that she has yeah. and it's thir- 24 minutes. It's hard. So I do that twice a week because it's hard. But the other days a week I want a little easier. But because I'm, you know, hip 50 ever since I did, I make sure I do light weights three days a week. I want to keep my muscles toned. I don't want, if you're toned and taut, nothing will droop or sag. Because we have 640 muscles of the body. If we keep them firmed and toned, it stays close to your skin and you stay young. In feeling. every area. Yes. You want to tighten in every area. You betcha, tone. baby. It's good for the bones, too. <laughs> oh, it's great for the bones. I think that's what's kept me young all these years is a little bit of everything. A little cardio, a little toning, stretching, yoga. So mixing it up really helps. When you guys go out together and you're like eating at a restaurant, do people come up to you? Uh, yeah, you lately a lot. Thanks, mom. I, I mean, know. you always, obviously, yeah. but um, yeah. And I show them what I'm eating too. I'll <laughs> say, "Here's my hamburger." <laughs> you should just you carry see? these around with yeah. you. No, I mean, I show the the food. Oh, you show them Don't, the food. Yeah, I, I, nachos. Yeah, I ordered nachos. <laughs> yeah. Of course, I, I did. Well, I did my beer. Go get Greek yogurt after this I, conversation. I got my beer too. Cheers. Yeah, the coolest <laughs> part about my mom when people meet her, they're always like, "Oh my gosh, you're literally just like you are in real life." That's the, <laughs> that's an amazing compliment, especially yeah. in 2022. You never right? know what's happening. Yeah. Do you true. know what being catfished means? Why do you keep yes, calling it 2002? I, I know. I mean, 2022. It's yeah, pregnancy you're living brain. 20 years in the I past actually catch that. It's pregnancy brain. 2022. It's too. real too, so shut up. Yeah, it's, it's real. I'm not catfishing the audience. <laughs> if you guys were each to leave our audience with a really positive tip that you've each learned throughout your career, what would it be? We'll start with Katie. Oh man, I would say 
be patient. Everything comes with time and kind of trust, not to be super cliche, but trust the journey. I think I struggled a lot in my younger 20s. I'm, I just turned 28. And so in my younger 20s, I feel like I was, everything was a rush. I wanted everything tomorrow. And like you see social media stars, they blow up. Trust the journey. You're getting no for a reason. And no meeting has no meaning. No meeting has no meeting. So like sometimes like you think a product was a waste of time, a job was a waste of time. And I always wanted things so fast, but be patient and like just trust your instincts because if you believe in yourself, then everything will come to fruition and just be patient about it because longevity of your career is key. Longevity? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> a nice little segue. <laughs> I mean, that I is just an allergy. Allergy. I mean, this is like the, the perfect person to say that <laughs> in front of, I feel like. I feel like I did it on purpose. I'll you, mom. Oh, Here we you. go. Of course you did. Okay. I think it's just be yourself. Don't worry about what other people say about you. Just be who you are. And if it, you know, just be who you are. My mom always said that's the, the dream about having your own life. You know, make it yourself. Make it your own. Do what you want to do and um, things will fall into place. I was just listening to Robert Greene's podcast or something where he was on and he, um, he wrote 48 Laws of Power and, and Laws of Human Nature. And he said the same thing. He said, no matter what encounter that you're having, make sure you're being you're being your own personality because that's what's memorable. Oh, I have to say, yeah. I'm always going to remember both of you. Oh, you guys Lauren. are a hundred percent yourself. Oh, <laughs> it's so true sure. though, because I love anyone who is so authentically themselves. Even if like, I, I actually met someone who was like very mean the other day and I was like, no, but I still like her because she's authentically herself. She never puts out there that she's a very, very kind person. She's like exactly <laughs> who she is. And so honestly, I really, you know what I mean though? I like anyone who is being fully themselves and they don't, you know, let anyone else waver their personality. You know what? But you would really like our producer, Taylor, who you met earlier the <laughs> other day on Skype happy hour. We had a Skype happy oh, hour. Oh, can I come? You can totally <laughs> come. Bring your red wine in your oh. rear. He was on with about 30 women and we had to tell a fun fact about ourselves. And Taylor started talking about his baby toe. Stop. Yeah, for about 10 minutes straight. I don't know what the point of the story was still, but he talked about his baby toe for, for I mean, 20 minutes. And Taylor, you really are yourself. <laughs> So I think that this was is, HR in this meeting. Yeah, HR, <laughs> was HR was taking notes. <laughs> um, I would love to do some kind of giveaway with you guys. Maybe I well, couldn't we send your magazine like a oh, signed absolutely. copy and yes. in your app. Like, yes. Absolutely, a year subscription. Yes. We can okay, do. Let's, yeah. can we do it? Like, how, can we do like a couple people? What do you guys? Say? Oh, absolutely. I could do Five. ten. Oh, oh, let's do 10. 10, come on. Uh, let's Growth, do it. Don't we, baby. <laughs> 10. We'll do 10 signed copies of Denise's newest magazine. It's oh, called yeah. Fit Over 50. I you can give it to your mom out there if you're listening. No, you're I want to read it too. Oh, okay. I mean, this is amazing. Yes. And um, and then we'll do a giveaway with your app yeah. too simultaneously. All you guys have to do is follow both of them on Instagram. Share your Instagram handles. Denise Austin. Katie Austin. Easy, easy. I like uh -huh. it. <laughs> and tell us your favorite part of this episode on my latest post at Lauren Bostick. I will. Uh, yes. Oh, please. already I will. <laughs> um, You're amazing. Uh, you guys are And amazing. Michael's so cute, everybody. Oh, he yeah. is cute. Cute <laughs> person, <laughs> too. He's Listen cute. To me, so he is. Yeah. He's really He's cute. He's a very, very good husband. <laughs> I can I mean, tell. Who knows what could have happened in those U of A days in a different world. <laughs> yeah. a different time. Too bad. Too bad Denise didn't get to go to your graduation. <laughs> <laughs> I was at your graduation, too by the way, bitch. Me, I, I was at your fucking graduation. Did you, I was. Did you toss up to uh, corn you tortillas? You know what? I had an interesting scenario where I got out of there early. I graduated oh. a little early. Why'd you uh -oh. do that? Um, well, you Chase and Lawrence. I had to like, I was like, oh. Oh. I got hell out. Oh. and then I actually never even, did I even walk? Yes, I went to your graduation. It must not have been memorable because Denise wasn't there <laughs> naked. I don't think I did. No, I don't think I was. Yes. She wasn't totally naked. Well, no, you, she Hot wasn't pink naked. Leotard. You know what, though? <laughs> she's looking. You guys got to Google this. I'll put it on my Instagram story. She's she's not naked. She doesn't have her labia out like it, I'm going to have after it, it, I'm It's done on my work. Instagram. Oh, it's on her Instagram. Yeah, one of the days. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post it on my stories, too. She's not naked. She's wearing a hot pink bikini. With heels. With heels. <laughs> With heels. And the guys in the background look like they're about to <laughs> like, I did tell the I got appro approval by the president. Look at the dean. The dean's That's like, the head dean. Yeah. The dean's like, yeah, <laughs> he, probably, boy, he probably was here oh with you. God. The dean's like Will Ferrell and Step Brothers. <laughs> I'm laughing so hard. Lord, you're hilarious. <laughs> this guy's like, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> they're shocked. They've never seen anything like it. Do, do you guys want to share will. any kind of code for your app? Anything you want to share with our audience? If not, where can everyone find you? Tell us 
us uh, tell us all the things. All right, at Katie Austin on everything. The Katie Austin ha- app has all in-home workouts and has over 170 workout classes and a variety of different types of workout classes as well. I have my own podcast called Austin AF. Season two is about to start. I have my own Snapchat show called Healthy Hacks with Katie, where I show you my favorite healthy recipes. And that's about it. And I'm at deniseaustin.com and I have subscription-based workouts for ladies over 50. And um, you can sign up for my newsletter. It's very popular. That's free. And my magazine, Fit Over 50. And... um, I love my life, so keep that going. You gotta all keep love your going. life. Where really can I find your live. pregnancy DVD? Do I just find oh. it on eBay? Like, actually, where can I find it? I'm not joking. Oh, I don't think it's available anymore. <laughs> I'm gonna find it's it. It's really old. Ask my goal. It's out there somewhere. I mean, my I it's out there. oldest daughter's 30. So but how do I get old. a VHS player? Can you convert it for me? Um, Figure it out. Yeah, uh, that should be the if answer. If you find it, I'll figure it out. You will. Oh, yeah, okay, will. that's a good husband. <laughs> oh, you guys yes. are amazing. Come back oh. on any time. I feel like there's so many different directions we could have taken this interview. Um, and congratulations on both of all your success. And it's so cute. You guys work together. Oh, I, ho- I hope Zaz is like, I want to be a lifestyle blogger extraordinaire. <laughs> <laughs> you are and a very successful I know, one. but I With want my one... daughter to do it too. No pressure, oh. honey. <laughs> <laughs> Thank I you. I will just say also, well, sorry, one last thing. It was really cool because I have always wanted to be on the Skinny Confidential. I feel oh, like I, I have really put it on my vision board. And I said for 2022, I g- gave like my top three things. And this was one of them. So thank you guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you for coming on. That's, that's really sweet. That is Appreciate so you. sweet. Thank, Thank you. you. Come back anytime. <laughs> okay. Stand up tall. <laughs> Tighten <laughs> up your tummy. Squeeze those butts. Squeeze Come on. If you bitches. don't squeeze it, no one else will.